Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so I would so appreciate if you could just hit the subscribe button. So today we're going to look at another poem called Oranges by Gary Soto. Soto was born in 1952 in California to Mexican American parents. His family were very poor and his father died when he was only five. Soto wasn't good at school, but later developed a love of reading and eventually graduated with a degree in English. He is a full-time poet and writer, and he writes vividly about everyday life. Now, discuss or reflect. Can you remember your first date? How were you feeling before, during and after it? Since Gary Soto is an American poet, he uses some American words. So I'm just going to pre-teach those new words before we look at the actual poem. So porch light is the light outside your front door. Rouge is the red makeup put on a girl's cheeks. Car lot is the American word for car park. So a drugstore is a small shop which sells everything from medicine to sweets. Candies is the American word for sweets and chocolates. And he mentions some American coins in the poem. So a penny is worth one cent, a nickel is worth five cent, and a dime is worth ten cent. Bleachers in the United States are stands which are raised, tiered rows of benches found at sports fields and other spectator events. So I've divided the poem into four sections and I have color coded each section. Section is from line one to line 11 and it is the journey to her house. Second section is from line 12 to line 21. They greet and walk to the drugstore. Section 3, line 22 to line 42 is at the, dr at the drugstore. And the last section is called the finale. I will now look at section one, which is the journey to her house. This boy is going on a date with this girl and section one is all about the journey to her house. Oranges by Gary Soto. The first time I walked with a girl, I was 12, cold and weighted down with two oranges in my jacket. December, frost crackling beneath my steps, my breath before me, then gone. As I walked towards her house, the one whose porch light burnt yellow night and day in any weather. So he describes the weather. We know that it was winter time. He talks about the frost crackling between his steps. He could see his breath when he breathed out. And we also learn about the girl's house always had a light on outside her front door, night and day in any weather. So something just to think about. If you were to make a small movie of this first section, what details would you show? Also think about what are the thoughts that he has as he goes on this journey to the girl's house. We will now look at section two. Section two is lines 12 to 21, where they greet and walk to the drugstore. Okay. A dog barked at me until she came out pulling at her gloves, face bright with rouge. <clears throat> I smiled 
touch her shoulder and led her down the street, across a used car lot and a line of newly planted trees, until we were breathing before a drugstore. So here we have the journey to the drugstore. Again, we know it's winter. She was wearing gloves. Her face was bright with rouge with the red cosmetic. He smiled, he touched her shoulder and they walked down the street. He remembers passing a used car park, but he also remembers passing a line of newly planted trees. The line of newly planted trees could be a metaphor for new love, which is just starting to grow. And finally, they reach the drugstore. Okay, the next section, lines 22 to 42, is the longest section, and it's actually at the drugstore. So let's have a look. We entered <clears throat> the tiny bell bringing a sales lady down a narrow aisle of goods. I turned to the candies, teared like bleachers, and asked what she wanted. Light in her eyes, a smile starting at the corners of her mouth. I fingered a nickel in my pocket, and when she lifted a chocolate that cost a dime, I didn't say anything. I took the nickel from my pocket, then an orange, and set them quietly on the counter. When I looked up, the lady's eyes met mine and held them, knowing very well what it was all about. Okay, so this is like the climax. If it was a story, we have to start the middle, the climax and the end. So he remembers the sound of the tiny bell as he entered the shop, the sales lady coming down the narrow aisle. He looked at the candies and all the chocolates, which were tiered in rows like bleachers. That would be a simile, comparing the slanted row of chocolates to the slanted row of chairs or benches that people go to look at when sit on when they're at matches. He was a young gentleman. He asked her what she wanted. He noticed the light coming in her eyes and he noticed how the corners of her mouth started to curl up when she started to smile. This moment, I'm sure he was under a little bit of stress because he started to feel the nickel, the five cent in his pocket. Unfortunately, the girl lifted up a chocolate which cost 10 cents. But he kept cool and calm. He didn't say anything. In a mature fashion, he took the five cent, the nickel from his pocket, and an orange which he had in his other pocket, and set them quietly on the counter. So I don't think he wanted the girl to see this. So quietly he put his five cent and his orange on the counter. He looked up, he saw the sales lady. She looked deeply into his eyes and she knew very well what was going on. She knew that he was on a date and that he couldn't afford to buy the chocolate for the girl. So now we're getting to the moment, will the sales lady agree or not with this unusual transaction? Okay, now we're coming to the final section, which I would call the finale. <clears throat> Outside, a few cars hissing past, fog hanging like old coats between the trees. I took my girl's hand in mine for two blocks, then released it to let her unwrap the chocolate. I peeled my orange that was so bright against the grey of December that from some distance someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. Okay, so the final section, he remembers the sound of cars hissing by, hissing, probably the sound of the cars on the wet streets of winter. He remembers the weather, the fog was hanging like old coats between the trees. Again, a beautiful simile, fogs hanging, fog 
looked like old coats hanging from the trees. He became very brave at this moment. Obviously, the sales assistant agreed to sell him the chocolate for the orange and the five cent. He took his girl's hand and he walked hand in hand for two blocks, for two streets. And then he released it to let her unwrap to open her chocolate. He peeled his orange and he remembers the colour of the bright orange against the grey of the December day. And he said from some distance, someone might have thought I was making a fire in my hands. The orange is like a fire in his hands. This could be a metaphor for the passion and the love that he was feeling at this moment. So I hope that has helped you understand the poem Oranges by Gary Soto. I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so I'd much appreciate if you could hit the subscribe button and best of luck in your exams.